Good day, Madam Seoul Park Chunki. I'm professor of the neurosurgical unit in the Seoul National University. Today's lecture will be uh, dedicated to the cutting-edge knowledge in the field of diagnostics and, tr and treatment of brain tumors in the Seoul National University Hospital. Today, I'm going to talk about the most malignant tumors uh, of all uh, breast cancers, glioblastoma. First of all, we should understand that the incidence rate of glioblastoma is different uh, in Western and Eastern countries. According to the Korean statistics, glioblastoma uh, reaches 5% out of all tumors uh, in brain. And naturally, it is the uh, highest uh, uh, rate out of all uh, breast cancer tumors. But from the point of view of all tumors, the most widely spread uh, tumor, uh, the most incidental is meningioma. The, uh, the next one is the cellotursica tumors, such as hypopituitary uh, tumor, and then neuroepithelial tumors. Today, let's talk about glioblastoma. Comparing statistical data of, the, uh, of Korea versus uh, United States shows that glioblastoma reaches 0.87 cases per 100,000 population in Korea and uh, uh, 3.2 cases in the States, which indicates low uh, uh, cancer incidence in, uh, Asian, uh, in, in Asian countries. But uh, when we talk about meningioma and uh, pituitary uh, tumors, uh, parameter, uh, the incidence is almost the same. Does it mean that the breast cancer is uh, incidence is, is specifically low uh, in Korea, especially low in Korea? No, it's not the case. Uh, this uh, chart, you can see global incidence of malignant brain tumors. So as you can see that in the Western countries, they have a rather high incidence rate, while in Asian countries such as Korea, Japan, and China, and India, it is very low. So clear, clear reason why uh, the incidence rate in Asian countries so low has not uh, is yet still uh, has not yet been detected. Here's the survival in uh, new glioblastoma patients. The total uh, uh, median overall survival is 14 months in a cell medical uh, hospital, uh, and the survival curve in a cell uh, university hospital is similar to all, or almost similar to all survival curves. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, one year survival is two year survival is 29 percent, three year 18 percent, and five year survival is about 10 percent. And it means that glioblastoma is a tumor with a very, uh, so to say, uh, mm, uh, with a really uh, uh, favorable prognosis. The most important uh, method of treatment of glioblastoma is surgery. So survival rate depends on how uh, 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 it depends on the quality of the tumor pool. Usually. When we decrease this small part with elevated contrasting, uh, we call it biopsy. Removal of uh, less than 50 percent. Uh, when we remove less than 50 percent, is partial resection. If we remove uh, in elevated uh, a large part of uh, elevated contrasting, we call subtotal resection. Almost complete resection. Removal of all lesions with elevated contrasting with a residual as a small point. Uh, full resection is removal of all elements. Removal of the entire area with elevated contrasting and adjusted area just uh, with some uh, cancer suspicions is called uh, uh, total or uh, supra total resection. Such resection is possible in some areas like frontal lobe, temporal lobe and others. And in order to completely resect glioblastoma in uh, Cell National University Hospital, uh, we mainly used surgery uh, 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 guided by fluorescent microscope using 5-LA uh, um, uh, fluorescing uh, agent. Uh, our hospital started to use this uh, method since July 2010. And as of today, the number of surgeries reached uh, about uh, 1,200 cases. So fluorescent guided uh, surgery 
with uh, uh, a light sensitive uh, uh, agent 5-FLA shows the fluorescence uh, provides a positive uh, response in, uh, four, in grade 4 gliomas and glioblastoma in more than 90% of cases. With grade 3 disease, it uh, pr uh, provides a positive response in 50% of cases. And in uh, second or first stage diseases, it pro produces positive reaction in 25% of cases, which is of great help in ca uh, during the uh, surgery. Fluorescent guided surgery in our hospital make possible to increase number of cases with complete or total reaction of glioblastoma from 40 to 80 percent. At this figure, you can see an example of such surgery. In a regular settings, the tumor was hard to be uh, discerned, but due to fluorescence microscopy with, uh, uh, with, with the use of light-sensitive agent 5LA, we can clearly see this uh, reddish area where uh, cancer cells are, are accumulated. After removal of this area with a, a control uh, review, we can see area of the red color, which indicates residual tumor elements. So, so complete removal of tissues in this area uh, makes possible uh, to have more effective uh, resection. Example of the use of uh, a regular white light microscope uh, the number of cases with comp total resection, uh, complete resection, uh, as a rule, reached only 40%. Due to fluorescent guided uh, uh, diagnostics with 5LA, the total number of uh, complete resection cases uh, was increased to uh, 80%. So about 20% of cases cannot be completely removed despite uh, despite of fluorescent uh, guided uh, surgery with 5LA. In such cases, in this 20% of cases, as you can see this example, uh, uh, there are multiple, uh, they related, uh, multiple tumors related to such cases, covering a wide area and uh, impacting important uh, brain regions. So it's impossible to remove the whole tumor, no matter how uh, we try to be as complete as possible. So in this case, we can do only biopsy or partial resection which uh, produces unfavorable effect on patient uh, survival. Besides, uh, the most uh, used uh, technique used in the uh, Seoul National University Hospital uh, for safety purposes and in order to retain uh, functional patient capacities uh, is a method of intraoperational electrophysiological monitoring. And the most frequently used method is MEP and SEP. The uh, Seoul National University Hospital has 13 years uh, or 16 year, uh, years of experience. Uh, MEP and SEP methods are used as a routine uh, practice. We uh, perform surgery, uh, so to say, uh, monitoring our patients. Uh, using intraoperational monitoring. Here, you can see an example of uh, of using of uh, IM uh, intraoperational monitoring in order to retain uh, motor uh, cortex function. Use a special strap. Uh, we can f uh, detect the position of motor cortex and do surgery retaining uh, motor function. So thus, we can completely remove the tumor. Another feature is the following. We can place uh, red threads on the aspirator so we can remove the tumor and continue with uh, drainage. So thus we can remove the tumor with uh, clearly seeing motor fibers, not the uh, cortex. So that's why bringing closer to uh, uh, motor spinal tract, uh, the intermonitory system actually produces an alarm signal. So when I remove tumor, I can say clearly if I close to motor nerves or far away from it. It is an effective way to uh, retain 
uh, to spare so it's a motor function besides as you do know uh, uh, it is almost impossible to control uh, speech uh, during uh, general anesthesia but in our hospital using method called cortical cortical evoked potentials or CCP we can do surgery monitoring speech function even in uh, even in uh, general anesthesia settings using cortical cortical evoked potential we can map uh, accurate fascicles uh, uh, which actually connects to uh, like, uh, speech centers of uh, Broca and Wernicke regions uh, to understand where the speech center is located in the settings of general anesthesia and remove uh, the tumor in a proper way to use uh, this method in our hospital we use a wide set of various MRI protocols in particular such protocols as uh, uh, as a DVI uh, is uh, SVI and PVI uh, besides interoperational monitoring in addition to such interoperational monitoring we also uh, uh, use apply functional MRI or DTI which helps patients to uh, spare important parts of their speech center prior to surgery. In this video, you can see a case of glioma patient. Uh, here you can see a patient with diffuse tumor in his speech area at the left. So using functional MRI, we found out where the Broca center is located and Wernicke area. DTI showed us the green part of uh, fascicle sarcoatus. Uh, we preliminary uh, marked the place where it is located. It is a Wernicke uh, region. This is Brock region. So we knew in advance where the speech center is located. Using CCP, we check it, then we spare this area and remove the uh, tumor in an appropriate way. So thus, it is a rather effective method to resolve two tasks. Uh, on one hand, to remove the most of the tumor, and on the other hand, to spare uh, speech function. Uh, with such surgery, with such glioma, as an intraaxial tumor. It is important in advance to define a position and structure of uh, organ. We uh, did 3D reconstruction of the samurai uh, uh, sections and created 3D model where we found uh, adjusted uh, just uh, important brain structures and br uh, blood vessels. We created a surgery in uh, using the CD model, so preparing to the surgery itself. In addition to the such virtual model in the cell uh, uh, National University Hospital, we use the technique of 3D printing, which uh, makes possible to create a model uh, identical to uh, a patient brain. This uh, brain model is uh, transparent. The tumor within the brain is uh, colored with green, and the surrounding tissues are uh, marked with a yellow color. The initially created model is uh, placed next to the patient when we do the planning. And also, it is placed into the OR, in order to be used as a help as assistance as assistance during the surgery uh, here you see the model located next to the patient it is a very effective method when planning surgery because it is much more evident and uh, versus for instance MRI in reality in order to use it in clinical practice it is important how rapidly we are able to create such model. First, we do patient reg registration with MRI. Then the MRI uh, images are uploaded into the cloud. And then the 3D printing company and the doctor discusses which part of the brain should be printed. After that, during four days, the model is printed. 
and delivered to the hospital, which is a, uh, rather which is rather rapid process. Using this process, we without any issues can apply this technique during surgery. Also, such model can be used uh, to uh, uh, to provide explanations to the uh, care, to patient uh, caregivers. So statistics indicates a high uh, satisfaction of patients and uh, their caregivers. So, however, uh, the uh, the surgery only cannot cure glioblastoma, and as to our data. Uh, uh, mean last span without surgery is just in the case of such tumor is just two months. Of course, in some cases, uh, patients can uh, live up to nine months, but in majority cases they die in two or three months. With the surgery, without any additional treatment, the mean uh, lifespan reaches as four months, which indicates. That uh, showing that life is uh, prolonged only uh, with another two months. That's why, despite of successful surgery, there is a need uh, for some additional treatment. And uh, in uh, Cell National University Hospital, we uh, traditionally use uh, uh, chemotherapy uh, with, uh, uh, based on ACNU and uh, radiotherapy. And since 2005, we use CCRT protocol uh, with uh, temozolomide which recently uh, turned to be uh, into a standard or uh, conventional method of treatment. Besides, bevacizumab is also quite widely used as chemotherapeutic agent, uh, the second line uh, chemotherapy. Uh, please uh, 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 look here that the survival of nuclear blastoma since 2000 uh, six indicates uh, improved survival uh, rate. So our data shows that survival rate increased if we treat patients uh, with uh, using CCRT plus temozolomide regimens. However, in some cases, CCRT with temozolomide with a standard protocol requires uh, quite prolonged uh, uh, radiation therapy, uh, six to seven weeks, which uh, for uh, patients um, which might be not, uh, so to say, advisable for, let's say, severe patients. And in such patients, we decrease radiation therapy uh, up to three weeks, and we increase uh, dose from two grays to three grays, uh, and we use temozolobite uh, with high positivity in order to improve survival. So thus, this protocol can be applied uh, to treat severe patients and elderly patients. In case of glioblastoma relapse, we, as a rule, uh, do uh, uh, repeated surgery, but only 20% of relapses are, so to say, operable. Other 80% uh, of recurrences uh, are not uh, are inoperable, so we can uh, discuss such options as chemo or radiation therapy. Uh, and uh, in case of 20% of total amount of recurrences, we try to treat them with a repeated surgery. It's a practical scoring system we use to determine where uh, to, to find the cases where surgery is possible. We assign one or zero or one point if MRI shows ependema involvement and zero or one point if the status was the status of KPS uh, is not above uh, 70 percent. If the total score is zero point, uh, the surgery is uh, uh, strictly recommended. If you have total score of one, it means that additional regen therapy is necessary or uh, uh, pharmacotherapy. With a total scoring of two, we do not recommend surgery. Using this uh, scoring system, uh, we so to say select so, uh, patients for uh, no, second surgery. Among the recurrent uh, patients, we have also patients uh, where we can uh, repeat uh, radiation therapy. 
in our hospital, uh, uh, radiotherapy is quite actively recommended. In, in particular, our data indicates that surgery and radiotherapy are much more effective versus radiotherapy in, uh, only. That's why in uh, our hospital, uh, radiotherapy after repeated surgery is the most widely used uh, therapeutic uh, modality. Uh, despite, since 2018, in our hospital, we use uh, NGS uh, panels uh, for all uh, brain tumor patients. Uh, our hospital has developed its own panel aimed to uh, diagnose uh, brain tumors using 172 unique genes. Uh, and uh, this panel is used for diagnostic purposes. We check all patients on genetic mutations, and if we detect a particular target, we discuss this case at interdisciplinary uh, conference uh, in the uh, Seoul uh, National University Hospital. Uh, this conference this conference involves all uh, units, including neurosurgery, oncology, morphology, neurology, radiology, and radiation oncology, and uh, some other units. In order to see patients, to examine them, discuss diagnosis, and decide which treatment modality is appropriate in every particular case. So the patients which uh, were taken to that conference are currently uh, uh, undergo, uh, undergoes, uh, currently treated within the framework of clinical trials. Uh, after that, after uh, after the treatment, patients could be admitted to our hospital. Uh, relapse patients are actively enrolled in clinical trials. Such patients. Uh, uh, so we can say that uh, in our hospital, when glioblastoma is actively treated, uh, we reach uh, that 10 percent of our patients reaches five years survival, which is considered to be a rather long period. Three years survival in glioblastoma patients is also considered a rather long uh, survival. Uh, so. In glioblastoma patients, long-term survival rate reaches about 16 percent, and in the Seoul National University Hospital, this uh, uh, in the rate, uh, three-year survival, uh, is above 18 percent. So thus, we can say uh, almost every fifth patient can live uh, for about three years, and in total, about 10 percent of every tenth patient uh, lives more than 10 years with uh, uh, parameters uh, close to complete survival, uh, complete cure. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what I want to tell you about the uh, current knowledge of the tumor uh, brains, in particular glioblastoma, which today is used in the uh, Cell National University Hospital. Thank you for your attention.